Hi everyone, this is Deepak. Hi, this is Radhika. This is Harsha Vivan. Hi, uh, so last year has been really tough for everyone in general, but more for early career researchers across the globe to find suitable career transitions. Historically, the STEM workforce has been pursuing transitional ca- uh, career options. However, we are observing a change in trend across the, spe- uh, across the STEM spectrum where non traditional career journey is no longer an exception. Recent studies show that about 25% of the STEM professionals in this world choose non traditional career paths. Therefore, we at iSTEM Care decided to bring to you a new series that is, STEM Professionals Chat. In the series, every week we will be inviting STEM professionals who undertook unconventional career journeys in their life to share their untold challenges and unseen practices with you. Today, we have with us Dr. Harshwadan Khare, a postdoctoral fellow at Pasteur Research Institute, Paris, in France. Harsha started his journey with a bachelor's degree in botany, plant sciences. But, wait for it, from there he moved on to do his master's degree in bioinformatics. And later, he went on to pursue his PhD at the Department of Physics, where he worked on computational analysis of protein folding and X-ray crystallography. And post his doctoral studies, he undertook an interesting career transition that is working in Citibank as data scientist to build predictive models using customers' financial data. A very rare career path for a person with a biology background. So let's welcome Harsha from Pasteur Institute, Paris, France, to our very first episode of the STEM Professionals Chat Series. So Harsha, hi, welcome. Uh, hi. Your journey Thanks seems, for inviting me. Yeah, your journey seems really interesting. Uh, would you mind sharing your career journey from being a biologist to then a banker to a postdoctoral fellow? Like, how did us all happen? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, it, it has indeed been interesting and I have enjoyed it every bit of it actually so the thing is i never planned for this journey like i never said that yes i want to do uh, i want to have a diverse career so that was never a goal as such so it was kind of a consequence of what i did so i don't think it was a planned action in that sense but what i planned was the process i liked it i liked all these topics which revolved around it and somehow now we label it as a diverse career but it is not set as a goal i do not think that if you fix in your mind that yes you want a diverse career that is not how it might happen it might just come up so the best thing was that i enjoyed every step of it all different things i learned throughout different topics in my academics as well as when i had transitioned into industry for some while uh, so all those steps were learning steps for me and I enjoyed the learning part of it and that shaped as a diverse career so that's how it went okay so um, Hush, this is really interesting so to understand your journey so um, I wanted to understand like how you interacted with the people at every stage of your journey and what are the most enjoying thing uh, about your journey? Like what was the thing which you enjoyed most uh, in this whole career path? So I cannot say one thing which I enjoyed the most. I think I enjoyed all of them equally well. And that is how I was able to transition to different fields when it was necessary. Mm-hmm. So if I was enjoying only one thing better than or much more than others, then I may not have transitioned so much. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not saying that in a bad light, but it's just the fact that I enjoyed several things. So that's why I transitioned so much. So for example, when I was studying botany, plant sciences, I really enjoyed the gardening part of it. I always had this hobby. In and I was doing that and I really loved that. So that was probably something which drove me towards botany and plant sciences at that time. But then uh, when I saw that there is so much of data in this, so the biology is rich with data. There is so much that is documented, needs to be documented. And 
and throughout the years we are seeing that a lot of more data is coming in and you need to use computers for that and at that time my informatics was something very new new techniques coming in it was really useful for my plant science studies as well so that's how i got a small entrance into that field and because i liked it i pursued it and then it, it became my master's degree then for phd of course you have more freedom so i could choose my own project and i already knew many of the computational techniques before in masters so then it it all started rolling over but in every step it was the necessity of what i was solving whatever problem i was tackling it was a necessity of that problem that drove me towards that place not the other way around uh it was not a fixed thing that uh for example i have certain skill so that's why i will do only these things no it was right. not like that it was the things first i want to do these things so whatever i need i should be able to do that otherwise how will i be able to do those things right right so yeah so never the other way around i think anyone who is looking towards transitioning into something else will definitely have some something else in mind why why are you want to do a transition it you definitely have something to be solved some problem it, that's not answered you want to do something about it and you want to learn new things to solve that problem correct i think everyone has this at least some element of this but sometimes the situations are such that it becomes enhanced and you get clear chance of doing that true and maybe in some sense i was lucky also to get that chance okay that's awesome Yeah. So I mean it's it's actually awesome I mean knowing uh, uh how the transition has happened and of course uh, enjoying uh, every transition is very important because what happens is that people generally mm-hmm. jump on to things that seem attractive uh, and then sometimes they don't really enjoy it as much it's like you know uh, let's follow the herd kind of a story and uh, sometimes after the transition they are not happy but now they cannot go back because they have already taken a major step mm-hmm. um so this this uh, thing about you know following the herd is is a major concern with a lot of people particularly of uh, our generation uh, you know we saw the trend of how people uh, started going into the direction of uh, business management after they did their engineering mm-hmm. so every other year started doing a mba or we started seeing a lot of people uh, getting into biotechnology simply because there was a path towards it so we see following the herd happens with a lot of people but we are also seeing an opposite direction wherein a number of people are very curious or very uh, surprised to see transitions transitions happening and they seem to have a discouraging opinion mm-hmm. about it whether it is lawyer or whether it is your peers uh so we are actually quite curious about how uh your folks reacted to this transition i mean whether it is mm-hmm. your that mates whether it is your employers so all of them so both in india as well as in europe especially in india because there is always a thought process uh to have a step wise process mm-hmm. you know uh, i mean bachelor's masters phd post doc etc in the same subject uh because if uh some changes the subject there is always this fear that what will happen if my next employer will not buy me because i made a transition mm-hmm. so in our case like you know how uh, the reaction of the people around you what did they say when you started making this very, very nice question actually the reactions were as diverse as my career probably because at every <laughs> step people will have certain, some kind of question why do you want to do something like this so i mean this question is asked to anyone even if you are not changing your uh, field of interest even then the question comes but the the notion of the, the the direction of the question is more towards why are you changing when you already know something and you can you have skills to do that and then why do you want to go in other field and maybe even if even if everyone knows that you want to learn something they will want to know why you want to learn that and i think uh not as much for academic part of it but at least in industry if you, if someone is employing uh, employing you and interviewing you for that for a particular job then their idea behind this question is mostly because 
they are going to invest a lot of time in you, time and energy in terms of whatever, in terms of money or in terms of resources, their own time, whatever it is. But they're going to invest in you and they're interviewing you because they want returns on their investment. Of course, it's a transaction and no transaction can be one way. It cannot be all your way. It True. has to be also from towards the employer's way. So both the sides should get benefited and employer is trying to see whether this future employee is going to be helpful, is going to be useful for a certain task or not. So from, from this background, all these questions came and I realized that later on that this is because these people are asking these questions. They are not always getting offended because of, uh, because of my career. They just want to know if I'm going to be useful. And as soon as I understood this, I got an idea of this. Uh, it was very easy to, to at least digest these questions, if not answer them very perfectly. I'm not saying that I was always able to, I, I, I was always answering it in a perfect sense or not. Maybe there is no perfect sense of answering such questions, but at least you should be able to understand the motive behind these questions. Right. Once that is clear, these are not frightful questions. It's just because both the sides want to know whether the transaction, whether it is employee-employer transaction or whatever, or student-teacher transaction is going to be helpful or not. So from this background, I have faced these questions especially when I went from PhD to Citibank where there was a drastic change. So in academics, it's not that much of a drastic change because you are learning and everyone knows that you want to learn something more. Cool. So these questions are really soft in those fields. If, if I'm going from plant sciences to bioinformatics, it was not really a question that time. It was just that I'm a bachelor student. I want to explore something more. So it was as straightforward as that, but if you're going into a company, they will definitely want to know. And um, they asked me why you are doing PhD and why do you want to uh, do a career in, first of all, why do you want to come to industry? And second of all, why do you want to change your field? Cool. But uh, the job was not really very different in the sense that I, I was going to work as a data scientist in Citibank. And in all my PhD, I had used a lot of statistical techniques, which remain fundamentally the same. It's only up to me how I transfer my knowledge from one domain to the other. So if you have understood the methods clearly, and if you know that there is, there is a possible transfer of knowledge from one domain, which is biology, to the other domain, which is finance, then you can explain how you will be solving their problems. And if you have at least some clarity about this, that is enough to start with a new job. But without any clarity about how you are going to use your skills in their benefit, then it becomes challenging to answer. Right. right. So I had already thought about this before. If I want to use my skills in certain field, how and which part of it will be useful. So that, may, that was quite helpful actually. And again, coming back from industry to academia as a postdoc, there was again some challenge and not challenge as well, but the questions were challenging to answer in, yeah. in a way. Because one thing is industrial jobs are more secure in that sense because they are not mm -hmm. like a contract job. Right. Whereas postdoc jobs, they are contracts. Right. So I will have either one year, two year, three year contract and I again have yeah. to apply for another grant or something like that. So the question became a little different over there. Why you already had a job? Why do you want to come to academic then? Right. Uh, so there, it the, mo most of my interest mattered over there for me personally. Because I was really interested in the topic that these people in this lab where I'm working now in Institute of Pasteur, they are they were working on image analysis and deep learning part, which I was confident to work on. However, I had not got enough chance to do that. And okay. my interest really mattered over there. And from the skill set point of view, uh, if you know one method and you try it in many different domains, you become more and more expert to understand the fundamentals of that method. 
and i already used my statistical understanding the method of statistics and machine learning in computational biology in my molecular dynamics during my phd then for predictive models of finance in city bank so if i get to an use my methods in another domain i am definitely going to be more proficient in understanding how these methods work and that's what i wanted to do and that is what i explained in the interview that this is why my skill sets can be transferred over here i already used it in different domains and right. another domain is actually very useful for me as well as the project that they are working on right so, so i bring in the we... skills that are really useful to them so that's right. how i convince these people that's awesome so uh, before we actually go to the challenges uh, can i just ask quickly one question mm-hmm. so uh, it, we, we, during the process of this transition did you take any advice like is there any particular advice do you remember that oh this teacher has actually guided me really well and that's why like you know it was a motivation for you to like go into a, another uh-huh. field or and another question i have which is in kind of uh, mm-hmm. continuation with this that how your family reacted in this whole situation because it's another another challenge if your kid is going from one field to another field your ki- your mom dad or like you know brother or sister they are going to ask are you re- are you sure you want to go to this field or something like that so what was the how how do you like uh, do you have any particular yeah. take on it or uh, can you share some particular experience where you have Uh, maybe i will uh, go for the f- second question first how my family was re- reacting to all this right uh, transitions and that i did for a couple of times now so in one word actually not two words no problem <laughs> so, oh okay so That's there awesome. there was never a problem with my family in doing all these things because somehow uh, they had never fixed any notion of what i will do because whatever comes your way you if you are adaptable enough mm-hmm. if you are flexible enough to learn new things and be appropriate for the situation you should be able to do that and that's what both my parents and my mother and father they, both of them really valued that that that's i had taken these decisions based on what i think is appropriate right so that was actually very supportive for me mm-hmm. because otherwise it i might have done something else i do not know if mm-hmm. I, if there was a different trajectory plan for me if my parents had not supported these decisions but they never actually told me what to do or what not to do okay. just be appropriate for whatever is coming up okay. so that's i think awesome. that is what that's good to know that's good to know <laughs> yeah awesome and, and, and the second yeah many people was, many yeah. people along the way uh-huh uh, for advice or for understanding from their experiences because everyone is different and they may not have the diverse field of transitions but they did have very important points that they told me during my journey and they were not always teachers or from academic or science field all the time they were from different fields right in fact one um one good advice in the sense when a good point was made to me by the career advisor not career advisor actually so she was working for iisc the indian institute of science as career management because many students are there in the institute and many companies want to come to the campus for interviews because there is master bachelor everything in iisc correct correct but also phd's and for phd's very few companies come but they do come and uh this lady actually encouraged me to apply for different fields not just looking at the names of the companies but to actually go through the background of the company see what they are working on and where you fit in their work so that was really very useful at the end of my phd because otherwise for most phd's the only path that is very obvious is doing postdoc or in some scientific uh companies science industries but there are many other companies where you can go and you can actually see if your skills can be used over there but for that you have to spend 
sort of like understanding what those companies are doing correct if you were in those companies what you would have done right all these things so i got this advice from a person i had not expected to get advice from and okay. it was really <laughs> very helpful i value it very right. much right right and also in city bank where there was there were not many phd's maybe three or four phd's somewhere in the whole office mm-hmm. but my manager and other people in my group they were always very supportive of doing something new understanding something right. new to the to the core of it right. before actually using it so even if you do not end up using it you try to learn it see if it is useful or not and then go ahead so that was the good uh, all those people had very good points always to make on whatever we did in city bank right very good team and yeah and of course right. my phd lab was really helpful in right. doing this so, in certain ways right 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 so you you think that we actually uh, it has a lot of influence what i can say where we work and our surrounding like you know our team matters it may be like with respect to your phd team or your mm-hmm. postdoc team now and in between your city bank team so i think team environment is very important i feel in such transition and it actually helps right yeah definitely definitely it helps yeah and okay. everyone has something to give you only thing is just being receptive to what they are saying because they will have very different opinions and not every point is in our uh, our way so right. there will be contradicting points as well mm-hmm. if you just take them plainly and understand them without putting at least trying not to put as much bias as possible right then you understand their point of view and what to get out of it because everyone makes different points most right. of them are useful actually right Yeah, it sounds perfect. I mean, like uh, uh, you have had. I mean, I I definitely don't want to say that it was a smooth journey, but uh, you had a very supportive journey. In fact, uh, yes. As as per uh, what you've been saying, that your family was quite supportive, uh, your peers and your uh, employers in different uh, time points have been quite supportive of your transitions. Uh, so that indeed has been quite uh, nice and quite uh, good. Uh, in helping you transition from one journey to another, because uh, we have come across several people who are interested in making like you know uh, different choices than the norms, mm-hmm. but generally they encounter some or the other challenges simply because uh, either the family is not supportive, or it's like they are tied with the money, or their employers are not really sure if they'll get up to that particular challenge. So most of the people. end up in their own profession or end up into something else that they don't like simply because you know uh hmm. no one has been so supportive so i think one of the primary factor that is essential in such kind of path breaking uh, careers is uh, support uh and not just you know uh, getting direct support or like you know looking for support in every uh, single path is important so that uh, you can continue your journey as to what you have planned for your life Uh, yeah so this was amazing i think uh, uh we've learned a lot uh from you in this particular point uh so as as i've been speaking about challenges i think one of the primary factors that we also need to understand is uh, maybe challenges uh that are important for our journey ahead uh mm-hmm. so maybe like uh i think one of the primary factors that our viewers might be interested in is knowing about like you know what all uh, major challenges and major uh, uh battles that you had to uh, undergo uh, in your journey so perhaps in uh, the session 2 of our meet uh, we can discuss more about uh, how you encountered these challenges and how you overcame these challenges and how you uh, sort of like you know uh, went ahead with your planned journey Uh, or i should say unplanned journey <laughs> <laughs> so uh perhaps we'll meet back in session 2 and then you can guide our viewers more about this